Google sure. just released their answer to ChatGPT, Codes, and Cloud Code. And I have to say, I'm excited. The reason why I'm excited is because this is an open source project. What that means is that it will likely get extended by other developers. Some people will build tools on top of it. I foresee this will help Google catch up to their competitors and probably surpass them at some point. And at least that's what I believe. I don't know if that would actually happen, but we will see. Now, the project is called Gemini CLI. And today we will focus on the installation of it in your own computer and some of the initial reactions. I haven't played with it enough to be able to provide you with many use cases, but we will try. Now, before I proceed, it's just worth mentioning that since this is an open source project, it's completely free to use. What actually makes this a game changer, at least in my opinion, for you and for me, is that it comes with a free Gemini credits attached to it as well. So you're going to get 60 model requests per minute and 1,000 uh, requests per day. And this is a really generous offering for a premium AI model like Gemini. But with that out of the way, I would like to ask you to take a moment to like this video and leave a comment letting us know what you will be using Gemini CLI for. If you run into issues, drop them in the comments below as well. Let's crowdsource answers from the community and help each other out. But enough talking, let's jump in. Now let's talk about requirements. So if you are on the Gemini CLI blog post, you just scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see that you can get this through GitHub. I have clicked on the link and it took me to the GitHub page, but I will leave you the link for you to be able to get those without having to play around with it too much. But once you are on GitHub, you want to scroll down and on the quick start, you're going to see all the requirements that you need. So you need to have node.js installed. If you don't have it, I will leave a link down in the description below for a video that is for something different, but it will teach you how to install not Node.js in your Mac computer. The next thing that you will need to do is you need to run the CLI. And the way you do that is through the terminal. You copy that, paste it, and let it run. We're going to run it. I will ask you if, if it can proceed. I say yes with the letter Y. And now it will get installed in my computer. Now it's asking me whether or not it can access the desktop folder. We're going to click allow. And it also wants to access the documents folder and the downloads folder. So we're going to allow it and iCloud drive and the photo library. We want to allow for access and then music. And as you can see, it's running. Now it should prompt me to log in with Google. Let's give it a moment. All right, I, I have to press enter. So now it's logging me into my Google account. It would take you to this page. And from here, all you have to do is close the window because as you can see, it has been authenticated. So you can close the window and return back to the terminal. Now this might look scary because if you're not used to it, the terminal is, it looks a little bit different user interface than most other AI tools, but nothing to be scared about. You just have to learn a few commands. And if you're here on the GitHub page, they actually provide quite a few ideas. As I mentioned before, you get 60 model requests per minute, 1000 requests per day using Gemini, which again is a lot if you think about it, because they're completely free. If you scroll down, you got some examples here. So you can create a new project and create a Gemini Discord bot. That's one of the samples they provide, or you can work on an existing project. And the way you do it is by 
providing the link for GitHub and continuing on that. And you got some next steps here and some popular tasks that they have worked through. There will be many examples in the upcoming weeks. I would actually record a follow-on video about exactly what you can do or what you can get done with Gemini CLI. Today, we're more focusing on getting it installed and getting it up and running. But at the same time, I want to provide you with some examples because at the end of the day, those are going to be important for your development and for you to be able to get the most out of this. The first thing that I want to try is creating a simple one page HTML website for my YouTube channel. So we're going to send this and give it a try. Let's see what we get. And again, it was as simple as using Google Gemini on the browser or the app. So nothing different. So we're going to here, it will ask if, if we can apply the change, we're going to allow once for now and we will let it work on it. As you can see down here, you get how much percentage you get left in the contest and how many errors to make this please replace your channel ID. All right, let's get the channel ID. I'm going to do it here to the side. So we're going to check. Let's find a channel ID here. Okay. So we're going to enter this. Let's wait for, okay. We're going to allow once again. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yep. He updated the channel ID. So that's a good thing. And now for the video ID, uh, let's find the video and let me get the ID. So here we have video ID. Let's make sure. Yep. All right. We are going to give it a moment. Let's allow it to actually bring these up and then we're going to put this on a test editor and we're going to take a look at exactly how it looks like. It's pretty nice. I don't think I like my new setup. Computer is down here. Camera is here. So I keep looking down. <laughs> hey. So it looks like now it's ready. So let's open this in the browser and let's take a look and see how it looks like. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type open here. Allow it. And here we have it. It's a fairly simple website. Just keep in mind that this is only HTML and CSS. It doesn't have any Java or any TypeScript or anything else, but it pulled the right video. I click on the video, the video actually this opened. video. So the video is embedded into the page and check out our channel here for hosting and labs. It actually opens my channel. So it did exactly what I asked it to do. Um, and it's pretty nice. So that is one use case. You can actually develop some websites there using HTML, CSS, perhaps you can even venture into looking at adding some more extended functionality with JavaScript, TypeScript, or whatever other framework that you would like to use, but it does something there. Let's try a brand new use case, and I will show you exactly what it can get done. And this will be the last use case that we talk about, at least in this video.
All right, so for the second use case, we're going to actually create a web scraper. So what we're going to do is we are going to clear this out by typing clear. So let's see. If not, we're going to close the terminal. Okay, so let's close the terminal, reopen it. And now to be able to bring it back up, we need to run the same command again. We will need to re-authenticate, but other than that, we should be able to run what we need. Okay, so we didn't actually have to re-authenticate it we are authenticated so let's type our nest command now for this one this one is going to be in scraper and basically what i want to do is i want to scrape the titles of the top 10 videos from a youtube channel we're going to send that and while i'm sending that i'm going to go and get a random youtube channel url because we would need it so this one candidate so you can do that what is a url and this is the url let me make sure that i can see there as video so i can pair we're going to allow once and he's actually working on the scraping and once he's done we should be able to get exactly the last 10 times. So it's going to install that. So it's, it's installing our frameworks in my computer. Now it's creating the Python script. So it will be a bit. So, yep, I don't know it. that one it didn't found titles so perhaps i didn't provide it let's have a little bit more time and you know this is fairly new so sometimes it will work sometimes it, it, it will take a little bit more to get some stuff done. I don't know, you see the methods. So we couldn't find that seems direct parsing HTML is not working because the video titles are likely loaded dynamically with JavaScript. A better approach is to find the initial data due to send to the browser, which is often embedded in stack. So we're going to allow it to do that. So let's see what we get. All right, so here are the top 10 videos titles on the one template I used to kickstart my bike coding section. Yep. And then you got three ways to supercharge your code setup. Yep. Three ways to build beautiful websites using Cursor AI. That's correct. And the best practices to fix. Yep. AI app will now be built on cloud code setup. Yep. All right. So it looked like it actually scraped the top 10 titles. You can build an HTML website and you can build a scraper. Completely free in your terminal. And with this, we have made it to the end of this video. I really appreciate you sticking to the end with me. And I hope that I have taught you something that will help you at least use a Gemini CLI in your own terminal. With this, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.